family. St. Francis of Assisi. Hi, Father Michael. Hello, boys. What are you doing? As a matter of fact, I'm reading a Christmas card. <laughs> reading a Christmas card? But Christmas was months ago. That's right, but it only just arrived. It must have gotten lost in the mail. Can we take a look? Of course, here. It's a nativity scene. It's really pretty. Father Michael, when did people start making nativity scenes? Well, many historians attribute it to St. Francis of Assisi. In the year 1223, St. Francis of Assisi wanted to celebrate a mass on Christmas Eve in a chapel in the town of Greccio, Italy. He built a cave and staged a living nativity scene. Is he the same St. Francis who founded the Franciscan order? You're right, that was him. You know, St. Francis was born in Italy in the year 1182 into a wealthy family. His father was a merchant. As a young man, he spent money freely and spent his time enjoying himself, paying no attention to his studies. Do you see that beggar? Of course. Do you think I'm blind? Well, wait and see how he reacts to this. What are you going to do? My good man, cheer up. Today is your lucky day. My lord, do you have something for a poor beggar? Something? Do I have something? This is Francis you're talking to. Here, this is all the money I have. But, but sir, there's so much money in this bag. I, I... <laughs> Go on, buy yourself some new clothes and all the food you can eat. There's enough there to live on for one month. So, thank you, sir. May God bless you. You're welcome, my good man. My father has plenty of money. <laughs> How could a man like that become a saint? Well, you'll see. When Francis was 20, he went off to war because he wanted to serve his king. But he never reached the battlefront because he became ill. This is just my luck. I wanted to serve my lord the king. Well, some other time. I'll get you some water. While he was ill, Francis heard a voice. Francis, who do you serve, the master or the servant? Francis realized that he should serve God and not the king. I get it. The master was God and the servant was the king. That's right. And from that time, Francis began to think very hard. Hey, what's the matter with you? Ever since you were ill, you've been behaving differently. Have you fallen in love? I'm thinking. Thinking? Come on. My friend, I am going to change my life. I am truly happy now. Francis, you're worrying me. I've got a plan. Why don't you buy yourself a new horse? That will put an end to all these ideas of yours. You'll feel like your old self in no time. No, I'm not going to buy myself a horse. But wait a minute. You used to love spending money. Wouldn't you like to ride out on a new horse? Just imagine the people watching you gallop past, everyone envious of you. <laughs> that was the old Francis. I'm a new person now. And you know what? I like being the person I am. When he was riding on the plane near Assisi, he met a man suffering from leprosy. The man's wounds terrified Francis, but instead of riding away, he approached him. Lord, I believe the time has come to place myself in your hands. That act changed his life. It was a gesture moved by the Holy Spirit, who was asking Francis for his complete devotion. One day, he was praying in the church of San Damiano when he heard the voice of God. Francis, repair my house, which, as you see, is falling down. Francis, repair my house, which, as you see, is falling down. Francis, repair my house, which, as you see, is falling down. Francis could see that the church was almost a ruin, and he thought that God wanted him to rebuild it. Did he start rebuilding the old church? With stones and cement? <laughs> God didn't just mean the little church of San Damiano, he meant the whole of the Catholic Church. Francis understood this later and founded the Franciscan Order. And what did his friends think? His friends could see that he was happy, but they were puzzled by his new way of life. His first disciple was his friend Bernardo de Quintavalle. Sometimes, Bernardo invited him to sleep in his house. Deus meus et omnia. My God and my all. 
Bernardo realized that Francis was serious about changing his life. He could see he was happy. Listen, Francis, there's something I want to tell you. I'm all ears. Let me go with you. I want to devote myself to God just like you. Are you going to give up all this? Yes, I've made up my mind. I'll sell everything I have and give the money to the poor. Then you will have a treasure in heaven. That's what the gospel says. You know, I want to find true happiness. You're on the right path. Giving away everything you have to be nearer to God will bring you peace and great happiness. By the way, speaking of giving things away, don't forget that our St. Francis campaign is coming up. This is when we collect old toys in good condition to give to poor children in the parish. I know. I've already picked out the toys that I want to give away, and I've packed them up in boxes. Wonderful. That's very generous, and I'm sure you'll make those children very happy. Well, I'm not giving them any of my toys. Why not? Why not? Because they're mine, that's why. But you have tons of toys that you never even use. So what? They mean a lot to me. They were presents from when I was young. But Alex, imagine how happy you could make some little kid who doesn't have anything. It's fantastic, don't you think so? No, I don't think so. My toys are mine. Father Michael says it makes you happier to give than to receive. Hold on, hold on. I've got an excellent idea. I know what I'm gonna do. Where are you going? Hey, Dad. What is it, Alex? Will you give me some money to buy toys for the poor children? Give you money? Yes, it's for the St. Francis campaign, you know. But the idea of that campaign is to give old toys that you don't use anymore. Right, but it's better to buy new ones. It's all about being generous and at the same time clearing out the house. You have heaps of toys you don't use. But they're mine. I know, but just think how happy you could make other boys who aren't as fortunate as you. Okay, everybody, it will soon be time for our annual prize giving when the college awards a prize to the best students. As usual, we have two students who are tied, Sarah and Sophia. There's only one test to go, so whoever gets the best grade in our final test will be the winner. Good luck to both of you. forgot. This year, the newspaper will be publishing an interview with a winning student with a photograph. Oh, wow. Can you imagine? A photo in the newspaper. Right. I can just picture it. An interview with Sarah, the most intelligent girl in the city. Hey, where are you going? Where do you think? To study. What, right now? Yes, of course. I'm going to win that prize. We'll see about that. Yes, we will. While you're sitting here wasting your time, I'm going to go study. See you. Did you hear that? Yes, she's so conceited. Come on, let's go play. I can't do that. I have to study. What? You heard me. Hello, girls. Sister Patricia, you have to talk to Sarah because... I know. I overheard you speaking. Now, Sarah, you should rectify your intention about this prize. Rectify my intention? What does that mean? Well, you should study hard so you can be a good Catholic professional in the future, but not so that you can win a prize and have everyone congratulate you. But I want to win the prize. I know. Now listen, St. Francis of Assisi was a great saint, wasn't he? Yes, he was very famous. But he was also very humble. He wanted to be a deacon instead of a priest. And do you know why? Mm -mm. Because he didn't feel that he was worthy to be a priest. Right. He founded the Franciscan Order and called them the Friars Minor because he didn't want them to stand out for their knowledge, but for their service to others. Well, that's all very well for friars, but I'm not a friar. I want to win that prize. What is it, boys? You look worried. 
I'm not. I'm really happy. I know. I can see that, but Alex isn't. It's because of giving away his toys. I understand. Father Michael, do we have to give up our toys? No, of course not. But St. Francis renounced his inheritance, left everything he had, and dressed in a very simple habit tied with a length of rope. This was the habit that he gave to his brothers one year later. And he began to preach with such conviction that many decided to follow him. This also happened to St. Clair. She gave up all her wealth and joined St. Francis's group. Later, she founded the Order of St. Clair. Yeah, they're called Poor Clairs. You see, you should listen to Father Michael. You get all those toys for free because they were presents. So you should give them away. It's okay, Sergio. Alex will do whatever he thinks is best. You mustn't pressure him. You know, St. Francis and his first 11 followers traveled to Rome to seek the Pope's approval to found a new order. Francis sang and played on two sticks as if they were a violin. <laughs> How embarrassing. He was making a fool of himself the whole way. I would never do that. Well, Francis was very cheerful. Right. He was happy because he was generous and he gave away all of his things. Hey, are you going to go on about that all day? Give me a break. When they arrived in Rome, people thought they were crazy for being so poor. But the Pope gave his approval for their order. Living in such poverty is going too far. I know, but we cannot forbid them from living as Christ told us to in the Gospels. I had a dream. I saw this man, Francis, holding up the Basilica of St. John Lateran. I believe it's a sign we should endorse his order. Hmm. So Francis and his followers returned to Assisi feeling very pleased, and together they established the Church of the Porziuncola. Are you going to give away those toys or not? It's okay, Alex. You think it over. My toys belong to me. Want to come fill this jar with crickets? Whoa! That's cruelty to animals! <laughs> Check out the animal rights protester. <laughs> Hello, boys. Are you going to play soccer? Alex and I are. We're going to catch crickets. <laughs> well, you know that God wants us to respect his creation. So after you're through looking at the crickets, remember to let them go. <laughs> Nature should lead us to God. That's what Francis of Assisi said and he was famous for his love for God's creation. There was one occasion when a fierce wolf was terrorizing a small village. Francis went out to find the wolf and he spoke to him. Brother Wolf, you have caused great harm in these parts and you weren't satisfied with killing and eating livestock. You have also dared to injure people who are made in the image of God. And it's true you deserve punishment as a thief and a criminal. Come on, let's kill that wolf! The people are angry, and you've made an enemy of everyone in the village. But what I want, Brother Wolf, is to make peace between you and them, so that from now on you will do them no harm, and they will forgive you and leave you alone. Did the wolf do what he said? Did he tame him? Well, yes, he did. And the wolf never bothered the people of the town again. Another time, when Francis was sick, he wrote a song. Be praised, Lord, with all your creatures, and above all, our brother Son, who gives us the day by which you light our way, and who is beautiful, radiant, and with his great splendor is a symbol to us of you, O Most High. Well, I know all about people like that. I have an uncle who's an artist, you know? And he spends all his time contemplating nature. But we're tough guys, and we don't care about stuff like that. Do you think St. Francis wasn't a strong, brave man? I don't know. Didn't he spend his whole time looking at the sky and the mountains? Well, no. You'll see. In June 1219, he set sail from Ancona with 11 friars. The ship took them to Damietta, at the mouth of the River Nile. There, Christian forces were at war with the Saracens. Francis and one of his friars asked permission to go and speak with the Sultan of the Saracens. Have you lost your wits? The Saracens have put a price on all your heads. You can't walk up to them and say you're Christians. They'll kill you. We're willing to take that risk, Captain. We place our trust in God. 
You're both lunatics. You should be locked up. They'll kill you. Don't say I didn't warn you. So Francis and the other friar went to see the Sultan. That's really brave. Sultan, I was not sent here by any man, but by all-powerful God. All-powerful God? How dare you? You know full well that you will never leave here alive. We come to show you, to you and to your people, the way of salvation, and to proclaim the truth of the gospel. Master, shall I kill them here and now? Stay your hand, stay your hand. I will hear these men out before I execute them. Only a brave man would come here. If you and your people are ready to hear the word of God, I will happily remain here with you. And if you are still undecided between Christ and Muhammad, order your men to kindle a bonfire. I will step into it along with your priests, and you will then see which is the true faith. <laughs> I doubt that any of my priests would accept the challenge. And I cannot force them to. My people would rise up against me. Master, shall I kill them now? These men have only come to insult us. No, if all Christians were like him, then it would be worthwhile being a Christian. So the Sultan let them rejoin the Christian forces. So they came back alive? Yes, the Sultan was impressed by their bravery. Well, I told you this story to show that St. Francis just didn't contemplate God's creation. Right. I'll see you all later. Bye. I don't know. Maybe catching crickets wasn't such a good idea. You're right. It's not going to make you braver or tougher. <laughs> Okay, everyone, you have five more minutes to finish the test. Sophia, are you all right? I have a fever. Then why did you come to do the test? If you're sick, the best thing for you is to stay home. Hey, it's not nice for you to be happy because Sophia's sick. I know, but it means I have an advantage. Ugh. Very good, Sarah. Let's see. Congratulations, Sarah. Ten out of ten. Yay! Okay, everyone. Time to hand in your test papers. Just one second, please. I haven't answered the last question. I'm sorry, Sophia. You have to hand it in now. Come on, you can't carry on writing. Time's up. But, but, but... Sophia! Okay, but the last question is the easiest and I know the answer. I'm sure you do, but the rules are the rules. Can you grade her test now? Why, Sarah? Please. Sophia, do you want me to grade your test now? I don't care. I know I won't get 10 out of 10. Let's see. You got all the answers right except the last one, which you didn't answer. So you got 9 out of 10. That means I win the prize! Yay! That's true, Sarah. You're the winner. But it's important to be a good sport. Sophia did the test when she was sick. Right. If I wasn't sick, I would have gotten 10 out of 10, too. Yeah, but you only got 9, didn't you? Sarah, I don't like your attitude. Hello, Alex. Here they are. These are the toys I don't play with anymore. They're all in good condition. Thanks, that's very generous of you. But don't give them to me. Come on, let's go visiting. You can deliver the box yourself. Sarah, you know this is hard for me to say, but I don't think it's fair. What's not fair? I won and you're not happy for me? What kind of friend are you? If I wasn't your friend, I wouldn't tell you, but I think that Sophia should get the prize. Sophia got one less point than me. Yeah, but that's because she was sick. Hello, girls. Are you fighting again? Well, not really. It's about the prize. I know. I was talking to your teacher and she told me all about it. You know, Sarah, St. Francis was not against learning, but it's not something he wanted for his followers. Francis detested studies that nourished vanity more than piety. 
because they made Charity lukewarm and dried out the hearts. Do you think Sophia should get the prize as well? No, Sarah, the prize is yours. You got the best grades. I just want you to consider whether this prize makes you a better person, that's all. Okay, girls, see you soon. I don't know, maybe the two of you are right. Perhaps this prize isn't making me a better person. So tell us, Sarah, why did you want a meeting? Well, you see, I want to give back the prize. Give back the prize? Yes, I think Sophia deserves it more than I do. She did the test even though she was sick, and if it wasn't for that, she'd have gotten 10 out of 10 too. Sarah, what you've done says a lot about you. You're a very fair person and a good friend too. The principal and I will discuss this matter. Thank you, I just wanted you to know about it. The prize should go to Sophia, that's all. Hello, Father Michael. I'm so glad to see you. Hello, Susanna. This is Alex. Hello, Alex. Hello, Benjamin. We've brought something for you. Uh, uh, <gasps> Alex, why don't you give him the box? <laughs> <laughs> the excitement just boiled him over. Thank you so much. Look, he's the happiest little boy in the world. <laughs> Hello? Hi, Sophia. How are you feeling? The doctor says I'm better. Well, we came to visit with you because Sarah has something to tell you. Have you come to remind me that you won the prize? Well, congratulations. You can leave now. No, it's not that. I've decided... I've decided to give up the prize. You've decided what? You deserve it more than me. But... but... but you got the best grade! I know. But if you hadn't been sick, you would have gotten 10 out of 10 as well. And I think it was very brave to go to school when you were running a fever. The prize is yours. I... I don't know what to say. There's no need to say anything. I just did what was right. You're a really good person. Friends? Friends. You know, Father Michael, you were right. Man, you should have seen Benjamin's little face when he saw the box full of toys. I can imagine it. You've all been very generous. We learned it from St. Francis of Assisi. Father Michael, how did St. Francis die? Well, you see, the baking hot sands of Egypt had damaged St. Francis's eyesight so much so that he was almost blind. The last two years of St. Francis's life were full of suffering. The Lord even granted him the stigmata. What are stigmata? They're the marks of Jesus on the cross. You mean the wounds on his hands and feet? That's right, but Francis did not consider himself worthy to bear those stigmata. So he always concealed his hands in the sleeves of his habit and wore shoes and stockings. He did that because he was very humble. In the testament that he dictated to his brothers in the order, he counseled them to practice brotherly charity, to love and observe holy poverty, and to love and honor the church. Doctor, how much longer will I live? Only a few weeks, I fear. Welcome, Sister Death. Before he died, Francis sent a messenger to Rome to call the noble lady Giacoma di Sette Soli, who had been his protectress, and ask her to bring him some candles and sackcloth to wrap himself in, as well as a kind of cake he liked very much. He asked for cake? He was dying and he asked for cake? <laughs> That's what St. Francis was like. He was cheerful right until the end. He died on the 3rd of October, 1226, after listening to a reading of the Passion of the Lord according to St. John. <laughs>